Just wanted to share this email from a member of the Sonic Project. It says, Thanks, Luke, for your advice. Uh, I guess I gave him some advice in the previous email. And it says, uh, I will let you know once CC completed and we'll start preparation for SIS. This was on March 21st, 2023. Then two months later, on May 20th, 2023, I got this email. Hi, Luke. Good morning. Today I have passed my CC exam and thank you much for your effort into the study materials. This is a good message to receive from me, not because the gentleman passed his CC exam, but now he is more confident and determined to pass the CISSP. Now, the CISSP is in no way comparable to the CC, okay? I mean, but just this slight boost of confidence can be the difference between someone who is afraid or nervous to start preparing for the CISP versus someone who just needed a little push. The CC is easy. You can, hey, that's pretty cool. The CC is easy. The CC is easy, look. You can pass it just by signing up for the Sonic Project, but my real goal is to help you get prepared for the CISP exam. That's how people really know me. And sometimes once you get your fresh dopamine hit from a recent victory, it's all you need to take on another challenge. Not to mention, the material in the CC exam is 100% reflective of the CISP exam. So if you're studying for the CC, you're basically also studying for the CISP exam. All right, uh, let's get started with our certified cybersecurity exam practice question. Your company wants to purchase a cloud-based token provider in order to implement two-factor authentication. Which of the following cloud deployment models could provide this service? Infrastructure as a service, software as a service, platform as a service, or identity as a service? It seems like every security exam wants you to know the three different cloud deployment models. Infrastructure as a service is like having the power to customize near everything in the cloud. Do you want to make uh, 5 gigabits per second the baseline bandwidth for your virtual machine instances? Is optimizing the amount of virtual RAM allocated to different stateless containers or microservices important to your business? Do you want to route your DNS queries through your cloud server instead of your ISP? These can all be done by an IaaS. And infrastructure as a service provides a customer full control of virtual, uh, virtual hardware, memory, storage, licenses, and everything else from the ground up, or actually from the virtual ground up. Remember, this is a, this is the cloud we're talking about. You, you can't touch anything; it's, it's all virtual. I'm coming out with a CCSP course by the end of this year, by the end of 2023. If you wanted to learn more and become certified. Okay, so in an IAS, servers, firewalls, and routers are all provided, you know, virtual, virtually, and a network topology can be configured by the cloud tenant. It's all done. They're in control of all the infrastructure. Just like you would a physical infrastructure, you're in control of a virtual infra infrastructure. And before defining a platform as a service, let's take some examples. Dropbox is a platform as a service. Google App Engine is a platform as a service. Even Cisco WebEx is a platform as a service. These services provide a platform upon which you can build or customize your own applications and services. For customers who want to focus on just their primary business function and not have to worry about the networking, server, or the underlying operating system environment, platform as a service is the best option. Meaning a company may get a platform as a service so their programmers can just program code without having to worry about software updates, security patches, or system maintenance to their coding environment. That is all handled by the cloud service provider. Another feature provided by a platform as a service is that you can rent operating systems like Windows or Linux. The perk being the same as a development environment, you can use the operating system as you wish on demand, while at the same time, the cloud service provider will handle all the necessary updates and security for it, and you don't have to worry about that. What about a software as a service? For the Sonic Project, my certified in cybersecurity course, I wanted to make high production videos with lots of cool graphics and sound effects. A video editing software license for Adobe Premiere Pro used to cost thousands of dollars to buy the license, but now I can subscribe to it monthly for a low price of $20.99. Not only that, the cloud service provider would take care of the updates and patches and upgrade to the software without me ever having to touch it. I may just have to say yes, upgrade, or no, don't upgrade, and the rest they handle. I don't have to install a software program on my computer either that takes up my hard drive space and uses massive amounts of RAM to make these videos anymore. 
I just use a software as a service in the cloud. I'm using software that another company is renting to me for a fraction of the original price of the actual software and they are taking care of the maintenance as well. It's a pretty good deal. This is a software as a service. Given all this, if my company wanted to buy a cloud-based token provider that we can use to generate one-time tokens to implement two-factor authentication in our company, which one would we use? Well, we wouldn't need an entire infrastructure. We aren't building anything. We just need the software that provides a smart token feature. The correct answer is B, software as a service. We'd be renting software that provides identity management, such as companies like Jamalto, Secure ID, or Google Authenticator. The answer isn't choice D, because for one, identity as a service isn't one of the major deployment models you have to know for any exam. And usually an identity as a service is a subset of a software as a service. Good luck on your certified in cybersecurity exam, future security professionals.